friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide. And we are on July 31st, 2023. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well. Earthquakes and volcanoes and world weather. Starting out here looking at our sun for the last 48 hours. 304 angstroms brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory. Mixed here with daily events worldwide, we have two minor M-class solar flares to report the last 48 hours. Other than that, it's been a high sea range. We did have that solar proton geomagnetic storm that did affect us. Solar wind speeds up over 500 kilometers per second from most recent events from incoming sunspots. That was the last 48 hours incoming. Looking at outgoing now, a little earth to scale in comparison just a fascinating and amazing sun to be a witness of. Grateful to have you all tuning in, pressing play here with Daily Events Worldwide. Have a look at another light here. This is multi-spectrum. This is where we can see the most active regions, and they are Earth-facing right now, so cosmic energy is high and incoming, as we do have a couple geomagnetic events coming our way the first couple days of August. It's hard to believe we are already here at August 2023. This year has flown by. Having a look here, another light, and this is where we would see coronal hole regions black on the disc here, but there are no Earth-facing coronal hole regions right now to speak of. I really appreciate you all tuning in today and hitting that notification bell so you don't miss an update. Let's have a look at sunspot regions right now as we have an active 12 sunspot regions. That's right. That is a dozen sunspots right now that we're looking at. And three of them are pretty large. Looking at them in action here. Amazing stuff. Heads up. Space weather conditions. We are under R1. Minor radio blackouts can be detected and as well under a minor solar radiation storm. And that has been the case for the past two days. As you can see, three M-class solar flares, a couple of them were Earth-facing, and we did have that solar proton influx. Geomagnetic activity sitting at KP3 right now. Let's have a look at our real-time solar wind coming in at 354 kilometers per second after being up and over steady at over 500 kilometers per second yesterday. Looking at the space weather prediction spiral brought to you by ISWA. Looking at a large CME taking off towards Mercury there. That is the little orange circle. And the yellow circle is our planet. We do have some incoming space weather. Expected date August 2nd into the 3rd. Having a look at Alaska 3. This is all of space weather projected our way. Cosmic energy incoming as you can see all of that flashy incoming debris coming at the soho satellite amazing images here looking at the amazing energies from our sun it's too bad we couldn't harness all that energy somehow some way for eternal power here on earth but let's move on to earthquakes here the last 24 hours has been pretty quiet under 200 earthquakes according to usgs but some pretty deep events to talk about here south of fiji islands 534 kilometer depth there and a 397 kilometer depth at huma tonga and other than that there hasn't been much to report the last 24 hours notable 4.3 earthquake there in new zealand Quiet through Central Pacific Plate up into the Philippines. Way too quiet for my liking. Only reporting a 4.5 there. 4.8 and a 4.0 here in India, northern India and China. Right up into the Indian Plate looking for something to give here soon. These numbers are way too low right now. Overlooking Alaska, we did have a 4.3 magnitude earthquake at Adak, Alaska towards the Rat Islands. And as well a 4.5 here at Unalaska, 35 kilometer depth. Things have been increasing there throughout the region. A lot of minor activity, mostly. Notable earthquake here, 
3.5 Ackerley, Texas, as well 3.3 New uh, White City, New Mexico. 3.6 here, Morgan Hill, California. That's in the San Francisco Bay Area, as well 2.6 Nevada. Way too quiet through North America, way too quiet through Central America as well. Only reporting a 4.2 Guatemala and then overlooking Puerto Rico. Minor activity there through the region. And then a 4.6 here reported the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, South American Plate. This is where we reported the largest 5.2 earthquake, South Sandwich Islands. And that was yesterday, so today, still way too quiet. 4.8 there, Southern Chile, and a 4.4, Northern Chile. And that's the last 24 hours for shakers across the world, brought to you by USGS and as well, Walton 3D earthquake map here and app that you can get. Having a look here, this is the last seven days for shakers across the world. Seen quite a few deep events here recently, Indonesia and as well, Fiji. Expecting something larger and shallower to come the next 24 hours, especially with our incoming space weather, we'll most likely see something very large over the next 72 hours. So heads up. Also heads up here through Alberta did have quite an extreme weather event here, looking at moisture coming in off the foothills at the same time as we got daily evaporation of the foothill snowpack. And look at those storms that created through central and northern Alberta. We most likely saw a couple touchdowns of tornadoes here based on this satellite imagery. There was some intense weather that went through. That was yesterday. Watch for a couple more bands of moisture to come through throughout the day today so you could see some more pop-up storms but wow some extreme weather and heavy rains pouring through alberta heading northward towards all the fires in northwest territories and yukon so some relief coming there looking at regional sectors big low pressure system here responsible for the system that went through alberta you can see low pressure center there Central BC coastline, not able to penetrate the mountains, a large low, and then just waves of moisture coming in off the foothills and through southern BC. At the same time as daily evaporation and you get some intense weather like that, look at everything just light up. Wow. Thoughts and prayers to anybody that might have been affected by that. Storm damage, hail damage, flood damage, thoughts and prayers worldwide for everybody. That's what this channel is all about, staying aware and prepared. Let's have a look here at the weather forecast for the next little bit as we will see things intensify over the next few days, especially western United States and central and as well the Canadian prairies, large low coming from Northwest Territories there. We'll be bringing an extreme weather event southward into Ontario. Watch for a lot of lightning associated with all of these storms and the cosmic energy impulses coming from space weather events. Atmospheric compression events. Vast amounts of moisture here in a large low pressure center developing long range Saturday into Sunday, central United States and affecting Manitoba and Ontario. As this system develops, it's going to be a doozy folks. So heads up. Next weekend, going to see quite a system Saturday into Sunday. Central and eastern United States, eastern Canada from that large low. No major tropical systems developing in the long range from the Atlantic. Overlooking Europe, you've got some rainy days ahead of you. Multiple systems affecting you over the next little while. Lots of moisture and extreme weather for United Kingdom and Ireland Wednesday into Thursday. As that system comes through, you could see some very strong winds. And then an extreme weather event heading through Central Europe. Long line of moisture there. So heads up, Europe. You've got a week's worth of rain in your forecast. Long range forecast. Watch for this system for Eastern Canada. I wanted to point this out. Quebec and the Atlantic provinces are all going to be affected by this very vigorous system. Large low pressure center there, north of the Hudson Bay has been spinning around for days. 
Long range forecast here, Western Canada. Wanted to point out that there's a low pressure system coming in that will break down the high pressure and start bringing some moisture towards Southern BC and Pacific Northwest. In the long range forecast though, it's not going to change until the 5th or 6th. And then we have a couple typhoons here to talk about as the most recent typhoon is a category three and heading up into China. Long range forecast here, Wednesday into Thursday will be affecting parts of Taiwan with multiple bands of moisture and then just grazing the China, Chinese shoreline and then heading towards Japan. This will be a major typhoon in the long range forecast. Stay tuned if you want to stay forecasted here with daily events worldwide of this major typhoon that will be affecting South Japan and South Korea, North Korea in the long range forecast here. And then another system developing behind it. Overlooking Australia, Indonesia, and Africa. Still multiple bands of moisture through northern and central regions. Monsoon re season is in effect. Daily evaporation rains through central Africa. No major systems affecting South Africa. High pressure is still pretty dominant through Australia until long range forecast. Much love, everybody. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. Subscribe. Share with your friends and family from across the world.